Hello, welcome to another episode of Walk in the Park. My name is Tony Ingram, your host, and uh, we're going to go a number of different places, including around the world this week. Uh, let me just put up a little bit of information here. This is our uh, episode 15, recorded on August 8th and showed during the subsequent week. And uh, if you want to see all of our um, uh, episodes, you can go to my blog at IthacaFingerLakes.com, our Walk in the Park blog, and find uh, previous episodes. I'll be posting this one online soon. All right, let's see. Where are we going to go here? Well, let's get back to the regular screen here. Um, I have an apology and a correction to make. Last time, I showed this picture taken by Bill Hecht on a recent aerial flight. I think it was... July 29th, as a matter of fact. And I said, this is Teganic Falls. Look at all the woods in the in the gorge there. You get that perspective. Teganic Falls up at the end there, and then Teganic Point. No, 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 no. This isn't Teganic Falls. This is Frontenac Point, and the waterfall up at the top of Frontenac Point, and Frontenac Gorge, I should say, for Frontenac Glen, Frontenac Gorge, and that's Frontenac Point down there, the location of Camp Barton Boys Scout Camp. So uh, I stand myself corrected. Let's go take a look at the picture that uh, does represent Tagani Falls and Tagani Point. There you can see the big amphitheater of the falls in the back there, and then down at Tagani Point. That's just this, just a, you see a little smidgen on the bottom there, uh, on the bottom right. That's South Point, and just off the screen would be the swimming area. So uh, just a little correction there from last time. Uh, but uh, let's go take a look at some uh, other waterfalls. We're going to look at the tallest waterfall in the United States. Boom. Ah, yes. So Yosemite Falls. Some of you may have seen that. I have not seen it in many years. And Yosemite Falls is, uh, here, I'll actually read a little bit about it here. Let me get uh, my pitch over, open, uh, my um, paper open here. Let's see. Yosemite Falls is the highest measured waterfall in North America. Located in Yosemite National Park in the Sierra Nevada of California, it is a major attraction in the park, especially in late spring when the water flow is at its peak. The total 2,425 feet or 739 meters from the top of the upper falls to the base of the lower falls qualifies Yosemite Falls as the sixth highest waterfall in the world, though the recent discovery of Cacta cataracts in Peru it appears t on some lists as seventh. So um, it's actually three waterfalls in a row. The Upper Falls, which is, uh, let's see, we get some information about the Upper Falls. I'll go to the next uh, image here. There we go, the Upper Falls. The Upper Falls, 1,430 feet or 440 meters plunge, uh, plunge alone, is among the 20 highest waterfalls in the world. But the Upper Falls, you can see, are very dry recently when this photo was taken not long ago by the National Park Service. So our waterfalls around here are quite dry, and so are some of the other waterfalls in the country with this drought that has been affecting most of the United States and uh, other, where, other places as well, I'm sure. So, um, so there you have it. Those are the, it is the biggest waterfall, the tallest waterfall, I should say. Not the biggest, that's probably Niagara, but the tallest is Yosemite Falls in park of the same name. Okay, so now we're going to go a little closer to home, go over to Robert Treeman State Park. So here, uh, you go to um, the Upper Park, and I'm sure many of you have seen this interesting uh, wooden sign, trail sign, and map. And uh, let's see if I have anything to go with that. Okay, I know I don't. Uh, anyway, that was built uh, in 1978, that sign was put together. That was actually one year before I started working for the state parks. I worked for the state parks for 24 years. And uh, built by the YACC, the Young Adult Conservation Corps, which was in a sense modeled after or um, inspired by the Civilian Conservation Corps, which had a big camp in the park and did a lot of the uh, developments in the park back in the 1930s. Um, including some of the uh, trails and the stonework and so forth. Uh, I, I should say about the, the, YC, the YACC, there is another program following it now called the YCC, Youth Conservation Corps, and some of the money that's come in to help stimulate job growth during the Obama administration is funded some of that. I don't know what the status is now. 
So anyway, I, I went on my rounds. I'd go out every day and walk in the park. And so last week I was up in Upper Treman and I walked down the Upper Gorge Trail just to the, the big falls. And you go into an area here called the Devil's Kitchen with some big rectangular pools that are caused by the natural fracture pattern or jointing in the rocks. You turn around, you get, if you go, okay, let's go back here, walk around the trail to that, that area right by the big pool. Then you look back and this is what you see in the Devil's Kitchen. And I'm not entirely sure why they call it the Devil's Kitchen, but back in the 1800s when uh, this was a, uh, a private resort, um, like Niagara Falls and Watkins Glen and so forth, uh, they, at the time it was uh, um, the fashion to give uh, kind of uh, ominous names to rugged places like this, scenic places. A little farther down past the uh, Devil's Kitchen and, and get right to the top of Lucifer Falls. So this upper canyon of Treman is just amazing as I'm sure many of you are aware. But uh, I've taken people up there that have never been there before, and they just are amazed. I had one lady, one lady from downstate say, why don't you tell us about these sort of things? We didn't know this. This is amazing. So you walk down this trail along the edge of the cliff there, turn around, look back, and there, of course, is 115 feet high Lucifer Falls. Not a lot of water on it, but more than, say, Buttermilk Falls. The, this is Enfield Creek and Fall Creek and a few other creeks have... Uh, a little bit more reliable water than says this Buttermilk Creek or Taganic Creek. And just another, let's see, get another view of it here. These are about the same, I guess. Yeah, oh, here we go, here's another view of it. We'll stand back a little bit and get the whole waterfall, plus the wall along the trail that uh, we just walked along, looking back at the falls. So, um, let's see, where are we gonna go next? Well, the, um, Parks are places to go to relax, to get away from uh, daily life, to get into the balm of nature and uh, away from civilization and so forth. But they are also places that uh, we uh, commemorate things, we memorialize things, or we go learn about our heritage and our history. So uh, uh, in keeping with this week and uh, what's been going on, uh, what, well, what this week signifies in terms of history, uh, we're going to go to a park in Japan. Okay, so this is Nagasaki Peace Park. So, uh, of course, this is the uh, first showing of this show is on August 9th, which is uh, Nagasaki Day. August 6th was Hiroshima or Hiroshima Day, uh, commemorating the, um, the atomic bombing of Japan at the end of World War II. So I'll read a little bit about this picture here. Nagasaki Peace Park is located in Nagasaki, Japan, commemorating the atomic bombing of the city on August 9, 1945, during World War II. It is next to the Atomic Bomb Museum and near the Peace Memorial Hall. At 11.02 a.m. August 9, 1945, an atomic bomb exploded 500 meters above this spot. The black stone monolith marks the hypocenter. I don't think that's visible in this picture. The fierce blast wind, heat rays reaching several thousand degrees and deadly radiation generated by the explosion crushed, burned, and killed everything in sight and reduced this entire area to a barren field of rubble. About one third of Nagasaki City was destroyed and 150,000 people killed or injured. And it was said at the time that this area would be devoid of vegetation for 75 years. Now the hypocenter remains an international peace park and a symbol of the aspiration for world harmony. At the south end of the park is a fountain of peace, and that's what this picture is. This was constructed in August 1969 as a prayer for the repose of the souls of the many atomic bomb victims who died searching for water as a dedication to world peace. Lines from a poem by a girl named Sachiko Yamaguchi, who was nine at the time of the bombing, are carved on a black stone plaque in front of the fountain. It reads, I was thirsty beyond endurance. There was something oily on the surface of the water, but I wanted water so badly that I drank it just as it was. So we'll go on to another image here from Nagasaki Park. The park's north end is the 10 meter tall peace statue created by sculptor Seibu Kitamura of Nagasaki Prefecture. The statue's right hand points to the threat of nuclear weapons 
while the extended left hand symbolizes eternal peace. The mild face symbolizes divine grace, and the gently closed eyes offer a prayer for the repose of the bomb victim's souls. The folded right leg and extended left leg signify both meditation and the initiative to stand up and rescue the people of the world. Installed in front of the statue is a black marble vault containing the names of the atomic bomb victims and survivors who died in subsequent years. Okay, so that's a pretty powerful place and uh, important for us to um, keep it in mind because those issues are not gone. We'll go to Hiroshima or Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park in the center of Hiroshima, Japan. It is dedicated to the legacy of Hiroshima as the first city in the world to suffer a nuclear attack and to the memories of the bomb's direct and indirect victims of whom there may have been as many as 140,000. The location of the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park was the, once the city's busiest downtown commercial and residential district. The park was built on open field that was created by the explosion. Today, there are a number of memorials and monuments, museums and lecture halls, which draw over a million visitors annually. The annual August 6th Peace Memorial Ceremony, which is sponsored by the city of Hiroshima, is also held in the park. The purpose of the Peace Memorial Park is not only to com memorialize the victims, but also to establish the memory of nuclear horrors and advocate world peace. This photograph shows three landmarks in Peace Memorial Park, Hiroshima. Statue of mother and child in storm in the foreground, fountain of prayer in the middle, and the Peace Museum in the background. And one final image from Japan's parks. Near the center of the park is a concrete saddle-shaped monument. This is, of course, still in Hiroshima Peace Park. Monument that covers a cenotaph holding the names of all of the people killed by the bomb. Through the mon monument, you can see the peace flame and the A-bomb dome. The A-bomb dome is actually what's in the back there on the right. It's, it's w the only building left standing, and it's left as a ruin, but it's still partially standing in the, in near the bomb blast area. The Memorial Cenotaph was one of the first memorial monuments built on an open field in, on August 6, 1952. The arch shape represents a shelter for the souls of the victims. So that's a pretty powerful uh, message for us to remember in these days of nuclear proliferation. And of course, uh, we are at war in uh, Asia, and uh, the Air Force is sending drones and F-16s to bomb uh, Taliban sites or so forth in Pakistan, and Pakistan is a nuclear power, and we risk alienating the, uh, Pakistan, and uh, that's, so that's, that's a little dangerous. So let's go to a place that uh, people uh, try to find peace around here a lot, although sometimes there's too many of them at the same time, but a uh, very tranquil spot. Uh, last Saturday, I happened to be over in Watkins Glen State Park, and um, I'm going to uh, take us just a little bit of a video there. Let's see, we do we get to? Gonna go to the videos, hang on for a second here. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is what we call uh, Glen Alpha. We're looking back. Well, you can't see it so well, but in the bottom is the top of Minnehaha Falls, and then back in the dark area is Cavern Cascade with um, uh, in Cavern Gorge. So we'll see that better in the video. Let me just get that up running for us here.
So not a lot of water flowing in Watkins Glen either, but in fact I've been told some of the attractions there, particularly one called Rainbow Falls. It comes down the side of the gorge, uh, about a mile or a mile and a half up the gorge. Uh, it isn't even hardly any water coming across that at all. So, But uh, as you can see, they're still in the main gorge, and you can walk behind Cavern Cascade, and uh, it's definitely worth a visit, as all those people would agree. Now we'll go back a little closer to Ithaca, actually to Ithaca, a uh, place we were last time. Uh, this is a Bill Hecht aerial photograph looking down on Cornell University. And to the lower right is uh, one of the Cornell Plantations Preserves. That's Fall Creek Gorge. And might even be able to see, I don't know, I guess you can't see the suspension bridge in there. But in the middle of the picture is the Arts Quadrangle. And you might consider that a public park uh, because the public goes there, though it's owned by the university, and people use it that way a lot, and particularly this summer during uh, Friday evening public concerts. So we, the last concert was uh, uh, last week, and uh, let's see, let's take a look at that uh, concert here. Just uh, horse flies. So that was a fun little musical interlude to the final concert of the Cornell Arts Quad uh, summer season um, was last week. Uh, of course, public concerts are still continuing uh, on the um, downtown mall, the Ithaca Commons, uh, on Thursday evenings through early September, I think, and then uh, for a couple more weeks at uh, Taganic Falls uh, State Park on the lawn by the lake on Saturday evenings uh, at 7 p.m. All right, uh, so I'm going to continue my wanderings of walking in the park. We'll go over to Buttermilk Falls. This is the upper park in Buttermilk Falls, and I noticed uh, recently that uh, the woodland sunflowers are now out, and we'll be seeing those for the rest of the season and through into uh, September for sure. And uh, they are really amazing. They actually are a, a bona fide sunflower plant, Helianthus divaricatus. And you'll see those in sort of the shade of the woods, so the partial shade, particularly on the edges of, of the woods. Uh, look for um, woodland sunflowers. Very, very lovely. I always get excited when I see them every year. And I walked up to what's called Lake Treman. Oh, people get confused. I get confused. 
So the upper buttermilk has Lake Treman in it, and then we have Robert Treman State Park and Allen Treman State Marine Park, and oh my gosh. And I ran into some people in Buttermilk Falls that got to the top of the Glen and says, oh, this is, this is Treman Park up here, right? And I says, no, Lake Treman, da 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 So uh, anyway, you go up to uh, the upper park, and uh, the back of it, of course, is the picnic area, and then beyond that is this old dam, and behind it is a little Lake Treman, and uh, you could, the dam was built, I think, back in the 30s, and originally there was swimming there for a while. The trail continues beyond the dam along the base of that cliff on the left center, and then circles up around the top of the cliff. So uh, let's go uh, get on the dam and look out over Lake Treman, which is not much of a lake anymore. It's really silted in tremendously, uh, but this part of it is still a little bit deep, but no swimming there, of course, anymore. And uh, Lake Trim is a good place actually to go and look for to see beavers. Sometime I'll, I'll put up some footage of beavers that I've taken in years past at Lake Treman. And uh, I was told, I don't know, a couple of months ago, a friend told me that he had seen, and in, in, in more than one evening, seen um, otters, river otters, right up around the dam here. And, and I know they were originally in this watershed after they were released some years ago, I think back, ooh, maybe. 10, 15 years ago, they were released in Jennings Pond, which is up in Danby. It's actually part of the state park, an outlying part of the state park. And um, they uh, then moved on from there to try to repopulate the, the region with, with river otters. So it was really great to hear that uh, they were sighted here. And uh, I took a picture of this wall. You can see the dam in the upper right again. This is the wall on the trail climbing up around the cliff. Uh, that has new stonework on top. These capstones uh, um, have a hard time uh, surviving. They, they uh, get popped off by vandals and so forth. So it's nice to see the masons had replaced the, uh, the stones on the top of the wall. But just on the other side of the trail from this picture is this cliff. And it's very discolored and, er and eroded out um, in this spot. You can see it's yellowish and brownish. And if you go and lean up against it when the sun is beating on it, it has a sulfur smell to it because it has uh, uh, sulfur compounds of iron that are in the sediments. Those originally were uh, marine sediments, so perhaps the collection of a lot of invertebrate animal matter there, I was told once by a geologist, may have resulted in the concentration of s these sulfur compounds. This is the stuff that if you drill a well into it uh, and you get, your, you get sulfur water, Iron, sulfur, water, well, this, this is the, the material. So sometime you're walking up there, and it's a sunny day, uh, you know, take, a, take a sniff of that wall, because it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty amazing. And then you climb up on the cliff beyond it. You can see the trail on the right where we just went up on those stone steps, and there's the dam. And the original picture was taken from the other side of the dam, left of center here, and uh, uh, looking from the cliff above. And then there's a promontory you can go out to and get another view over Lake Treman. Lake Treman? That doesn't look like a lake. It looks like a marsh. Well, that's what's happening to it. It's filled in with silt for the last, ooh, well, since when, the, when it was built back in probably the 30s. And um, uh, there's not much of the lake left, and there's quite a lot of marsh now in it. Along the, um, along the trail, on the east side, which is where I was walking and where these pictures are taken. There's a beautiful forest here of old trees, largely hemlock trees, but others as well. So I just love that forest. And then looking out over the, from the shore now to the marsh and the, the shallow portion of the lake. And then looking back over some open water, but still not very deep. And around the bend there is the pool where the dam is. But uh, I've got another little video here, which I will uh, share with you of the scene, with the sights and the sounds of this particular scene. So let's get that one up.
Okay. So that's kind of nice, and the frogs and so forth. There's a lot of life up there, so uh, a lot of people like to walk around the trail all the way around the lake. It's, I don't know, a mile, mile and a half at the most. A lot of people run it, walk their dogs on a leash and so forth. And uh, so Lake Treman is, Treman is a lovely area, very peaceful. Um, so now we're going back up in the air to another Bill Hecht aerial photograph taken on July 29th, looking down at Ithaca up near the lake. And I'll point out various parks and so forth in this picture, and then we'll get down on the surface and look at some of it. But right in the middle, coming from upper left to uh, lower right, is Cayuga Inlet as it flows through the city, and it's been uh, uh, modified as the flood control channel. And then to the left of center, where there's another stream that comes in, Cascadilla Creek. It comes off of East Hill and Cascadilla Glen. And right to where those come together, just above Cascadilla Creek there, is the Ithaca Farmer's Market. So uh, you um, you know, hope you get down there and get some of the great fresh produce and so forth. The bottom part of the picture, the green area, the open area, that's the Newman Golf Course. And then uh, uh, above the stream is on the left, is uh, Cass Park and then where that big marina is, Allen H. Treeman State Marine Park. And then finally in the lower right, you see Fall Creek coming in and then there's this wall separating the mouth of Cuga Inlet and the mouth of Fall Creek. And just to the left of the mouth of Fall Creek is a um, uh, wooded area which is owned by Cornell Plantations. And it's kept for education and research. We're not going to have a lot more time here, but uh, I'll flip through a couple of the pictures here. We'll go down to uh, the end of the inlet, which you can't see in this picture, but, but the end of that wall, and there's our two lighthouses. And it turns out that uh, the 7th, the, um, the uh, August 7th, is National Lighthouse Day. And maybe I'll have enough time to read one little thing from, oh, where is that? National Lighthouse Day. It's coming up here. One little thing here. August 7th was National Lighthouse Day. It was on this day in 1789 that Congress approved an act for the establishment and support of lighthouses, beacons, buoys, and public piers. In celebration of the 200th anniversary of the signing of the act and the commissioning of the first federal lighthouse, Congress passed a resolution in 1989 designating August 7th as National Lighthouse Day. Okay, well, we're running out of time here. Just got the, um, the high sign here that we're just about out of time. So. Uh, Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you again uh, next time. Thanks for joining us at Walk in the Park.